Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton action and beyond. This week, we sit down with Denmark's men's singles hotshot, Victor Axelsson, as he tells us about a great 2016 so far. And we chat with Yuhan Tan and Cohen Ritter to learn more about the BWF Athletes Commission. World number four, Victor Axelsson's mighty pleased with his season so far. The 22-year-old was part of the Denmark men's team that beat Indonesia in the finals of the prestigious Thomas Cup, becoming the first European team to win the World Men's Team Championship. Prior to that historic victory, the Dane also claimed his first continental title by winning the European men's singles crown. Well, I think that I've done uh, quite okay. Um, I've had a few issues with my body in the start of 2016, uh, some minor injuries and stuff like that, but I think that I've overcome them in a good way. Um, you know, the competition, especially in the men's singles, is really tough, really close. Um, so every tournament you really have to be at your best if you want to make a good result. Uh, but I'm quite confident and I think that I'm at a, you know, a right place uh, in my career and I'm progressing uh, every day. And for me, that's the most important thing. Um, so yeah, I'm really confident for the future and I look forward to the next challenges to come. The young Dane has been on the rise in men's singles the last couple of years. Six months ago, Axelsson showed why he has what it takes to be one of the top stars in the discipline. At the season-ending tournament in Dubai last year, the then world number six defeated double world champion and world number one Chen Long in emphatic style to reach the final. Having lost to the Chinese ace in seven previous encounters, it was one of Axelsson's biggest wins of his career. Good block. There it is. Oh, he's done it! <laughs> Even before Dubai, I've had uh, the confidence in myself that I could play at that level. Um, until Dubai, I really hadn't been able to really play a whole match where my level was so consistent at a such high level. Um, so, of course, beating Chen Long was a great achievement for me. Um, I, you know, came close a few times, but uh, in Dubai, I finally uh, got it all together and, and won against Chen Long. With legends Lee Chong Wei and double Olympic champion Lin Dan in the mix with players like Chen Long, Jano Jorgensen and Axelsson in the top five, and shuttlers such as Kidambi Srikanth, Cho Tian Chen and Son Wan Ho who can meet anyone on a good day, men's singles is one of the most competitive events in badminton. To stay on top of your game all the time is not an easy task. You know, the competition in the men's singles is really, really tough because there's a lot of players who can win the tournament, uh, the tournaments actually. So um, even though you've played good once week or you had one good result, you really have to be on the top of your game and on the tip of your toes um, all the time. Uh, otherwise, uh, the other guys will, will get past you. So, uh, you know, I try to do everything I can to keep improving and uh, to keep my, my level at a stable, you know, stable place. And then, um, yeah. You, you simply just have to take one tournament at a time, and uh, if you do everything right, you have a shot at, uh, at winning the tournaments. Axelsson has been a runner-up in six MetLife BWF World Super Series tournaments. And with his confidence at an all-time high, hopefully the Thomas Cup winner won't have to wait too long before he gets a World Super Series title under his belt. You know, I think that I just have to be um, be patient. Um, you know, it's when I get the question, why haven't you won a Super Series final? You have been in six or seven finals now and you still haven't won one. I also respond that it's better to be in six or seven finals than to lose out in seven second rounds. Um, so, you know, I feel that I'm getting better every day and uh, I believe that I will get my title soon enough. Um, so, you know, I just have to uh, keep going and um, to keep positive and uh, then uh, I believe that my title will come soon. His positive outlook is one of the many qualities we admire in the 22-year-old. The lanky Dane has exceeded his own expectations during the qualifying period for the Rio 2016 Olympics. 
So when the Olympic qualification first started, my, my goal was first of all to qualify and to be in the top 16. Um, and now I actually have a shot at, uh, you know, being in the top four. And um, I'm really proud about that. Um, but um, I also know that, you know, now it looks like pretty sure that I will be in the top eight. Uh, and that was a goal for me when I started playing really well in the Olympic qualification. So I'm at a good place, I think, and uh, I'm looking at, you know, maybe being in the top four or at least top eight. So I think that I can look back at a good um, qualification period because mentally it's also a really tough time for the players because you know that you have to go out there and get some results and you have to get points. And that can be uh, mentally can be really tiring. Um, so I'm really happy that I got such a good start as I did uh, this time. And um, it's my first time qualifying. So I can look back with, uh, with pride, I think. This will be Axelsson's first appearance in sport's biggest event. And as with most athletes participating in the Olympics, it's a dream come true for the young Dane. It will be a really special thing for me to go to the Olympics. Growing up, you have always, you know, been sitting in front of the screen following the Olympic Games and seeing the opening ceremony is a big thing. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to this and uh, it's a big dream coming true. Um, so, you know, right now I just can't wait um, and I hope that I will be in my, you know, the shape of my life. After the Australian Open Super Series, um, I will have one week vacation, 10 days, uh, completely off and then we will slowly start building up. Um, so. That is kind of my plan at the moment, um, but after all these tournaments and the Thomas Cup and uh, Indonesia and Australia, I need some days to recover and, uh, you know, mentally uh, clear out and uh, get everything ready for the tough period of training leading up to the Olympics. Axelsson has proved he has the makings of a champion. The talented Dane is now chasing the sport's biggest prize, an Olympic gold. Hardworking, determined and dedicated. None would be too surprised if he manages to finish on top of the podium in Rio. It's time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want to know which Grand Prix Gold Tournament in 2016 offers the biggest prize money. Need a clue? The event is held in a country formerly known as Formosa. We give you the answer after the break. When we return, we find out more about the BWF Athletes Commission, the official link between players and badminton's governing body. Get in touch with us on social media, follow us on Twitter, tell us what you think of the latest news, or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging note for your favourite player. If you've got any comments or photos to share, do get connected with us on these social media platforms. Before the break, we asked you which Grand Prix Gold Tournament in 2016 offers the biggest prize money. The answer is the Yonex Open Chinese Taipei. With a purse of US $200,000, it's the richest prize offering at a Grand Prix Gold event. Women's doubles pair Cheng Wenxing and Qian Yu Qin were the first players from Chinese Taipei to stand on top of the podium when the tournament was upgraded to a Grand Prix gold event in 2007. Tai Tzu Ying was the last Taiwanese player to triumph in this competition when she clinched the women's singles title in 2012. The Yonex Open Chinese Taipei 2016 takes place later this month from 28th June to 3rd July. So be sure to catch all the action as badminton stars from across the globe will be backing it out at the Taipei Arena. Over the years, badminton has gone from strength to strength. More tournaments on the global calendar, wider television coverage, 
and a big focus on the next generation certainly make for an exciting blend. That said, be it on the court or off it, the players need a platform to voice their views. Established in 2008, the BWF Athletes Commission comprises six members and acts as the official link between players and the BWF. Belgian shuttler Johan Tan is the current chair of the Athletes Commission. What we do is we connect with athletes, with players, and we gather their opinions and feedback on different kind of topics. And what we do is we bring all this uh, information to the BWF and we discuss with the BWF, with the council, what can be improved uh, for players uh, at a different kind of level of, uh, of the circuit. As a chair, you're also a member of the BWF council. That's uh, the, the biggest difference between me and the other athletes uh, commission members. So it means that also twice a year I have to attend all the BWF council meetings and represent the athletes' views at the meeting. The structure of the commission is such that all members are elected for a four-year term, with the chair having voting rights at the BWF Council. Half the members are elected in the year before the Olympic Games, while the other half are appointed in the year after. The last uh, at this commission election took place last year in Dongguan at the Suleiman Cup, and the following election will take place somewhere next year within the next uh, within the first six months of 2017. So um, how it goes is that uh, at the tournament, um, yeah, last time it was the Suriman Cup, all the players who are present at the Suriman Cup can vote for uh, yeah, their representative, who they, who they prefer to be in the Athletes Commission. And of course, if you want to be in the Athletes Commission, you have to put your candidacy forward. Uh, there is a whole procedure uh, towards doing that. Uh, but then in the end, uh, the, yeah, the persons of the players with the highest votes get into the Athletes Commission. The Commission uses a direct approach while dealing with concerns the players may have. On the one hand, this includes feedback from players on certain decisions that have been taken by the BWF. And on the other, the players themselves approach the Commission regarding a specific issue. These can range from quality of tournaments and practice conditions to administrative and logistical matters. We put a lot of effort last eight, nine months on increasing the level around the tournaments. So for example, good transport, good gyms, good hotel facilities, good warm-up courts, good flooring. Uh, I mean, all the things who you don't really see on TV, but who are important for us as athletes that we are able to prepare in uh, the best possible way. With most members of the Athletes Commission still playing on the international circuit, getting everyone together is a challenge in itself. The body meets twice a year and also has regular discussions through Skype and other digital media platforms. While the role may have its fair share of ups and downs, working towards the betterment of the sport is what keeps the members going. I just hope that all, all other athletes are happy and getting better circumstances. When you take the whole journey, the whole two years or the whole four years, uh, as long as you're in the commission, I think you, you I mean, it's, it's, it's still fulfilling and, and it's important that uh, to, to work for the athletes. And if, if you do so in a serious way, then the athletes would also appreciate that. And that is something which, which I appreciate myself. Whether it's about representing the rights and interests of players or bringing issues to BWF's attention, the Athletes Commission gives players a platform for their voices to be heard. The Commission is certainly playing an important role in helping to make the sport bigger and better on the world stage. The MetLife BWF World Super Series made its way to Australia last week. And Sydney played host to the Siaman Air Australian Badminton Open. Women's doubles open proceedings on finals day. Indonesia's top duo Nitya Kushinda Mahesuari and Gracia Polly took on the Chinese pair of Bao Yixin and Cheng Ching Chen. The first game could have gone either way with both pairs taking turns to take the lead, but it was Bao and Chen who prevailed. Asian Games gold medalists Mahesuari and Polly battled hard in the opening exchanges of the second game before they succumbed to the pace and power of their opponents. Final score, 23-21, 21-17 to Bao and Chen. The men's doubles contest saw an all-Indonesian final. Anga Pratama and Ricky Karanda Suwadi faced off against Marcus Vinaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamojo. 
It was a rematch of April's Yonex Sunrise India Open final, in which Gideon and Sukamuljo emerged victorious. And the world number 13 duo repeated their success again in Sydney. They completed their task in just over half an hour, taking home their second World Super Series title in straight games. 21-14, 21-15 the final score. It's a tale of firsts in the ensuing men's singles final. Korea's John Hyuk Jin and Hans Christian Wittinghus of Denmark were both making their maiden appearance in a World Super Series final. The Dane drew first blood, only for John to tie the match at one apiece after the second game. But it was Wittinghus who took control in the decisive rubber. Using his experience against his tiring East Asian opponent, the Danish world number 12 settled the match in comfortable fashion. 21-16, 19-21, 21-11 the final score, and Wittinghus the proud champion. Uh, I'm over the moon, I'm thrilled with the, what has happened the last uh, three weeks, winning the Thomas Cup and, and now winning my first Super Series ever. Uh, it's, it's pretty special and almost unbelievable, uh, but I'm, I'm so pr proud of myself and uh, extremely happy about what I, uh, I have achieved uh, today. And it's hard to see this year getting much better for me right now. Mixed doubles was up next and China had representation on both ends. World number 53, Zheng Siwei and Zheng Qingchen were looking to get one over their more established compatriots, Liu Kai and Huang Yaqiong. But try as they might, Liu and Huang had answers to everything Zheng and Chen threw at them. The match was over in 38 minutes as the world number 10 pair wrapped up the match in straight games. Liu and Huang victorious with a final score 21-18, 21-14. The women's singles final was an encounter between Chinese world number 12 Sun Yu and India's Saina Newell. Sun has lost to Saina in five previous meetings and was keen to address her poor record against the Indian favorite in this one. The 22-year-old was quick off the blocks in the first game, but a defiant Saina forced the match into a decider. In the rubber, the Olympic bronze medalist kept her composure and stepped up a gear. Saina clinched her first title of the year. The final score 11 21, 21 14, 21 19. Oh, the match was really, really uh, tough today. I never expected Sunyu to give me such a tough fight, but um, she played really well. I'm happy with the. Uh, yesterday, in fact, I told uh, the press here that I want a tough fight today, and that's what happened. Uh, but yeah, I was not as good as the last two days, but still, I pulled out the match. I'm very happy about it. Yeah. After the break, we head to Bangkok, Thailand to meet with one of the country's young prospects, Adul Rat Namko. Visit our YouTube channel, BabingtonWorld.tv. There are tournament highlights, play of the day, as well as past matches to savor. Missed an episode of Badminton Unlimited? Do not fret. All the episodes are available for your viewing pleasure. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. The MetLife BWF World Super Series is a 12-tournament series where the world's best singles and doubles players compete to reach the top eight of the Destination Dubai rankings and secure a place in the Dubai World Super Series finals. Let's take a look at how the players line up in men's singles after England, India, Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia. China's Tian Ho Wei tops the list. Runner-up at the Yonex All England Open, semi-finalist at the BCA Indonesia Open, and quarter-finalist at the OUE Singapore Open and Cellcom Asiata Malaysia Open, Tian has amassed the most points in World Super Series events this season. His senior compatriot, Lin Dan, is in second after claiming his sixth All England title and making it to the semi-finals of the Singapore Open. Recent runner-up at the Indonesia Open, Jan O. Jorgensen of Denmark takes third place, the Danish shuttler also reached the semi-finals of the Malaysia Open and quarter-finals of the All England. Malaysian superstar Lee Chong Wei moves up five places to number four after clinching the title in Indonesia. Victor Axelsen moves down two spots to fifth after retiring in his first round match in Indonesia. 
Germany's Marx Wiebler takes the seventh spot, and Hans Christian Wittingus is the third Dane to make the list in eighth. The Destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday after a World Super Series tournament. To find out how players are faring in their race to make the cut for the season-ending Dubai World Super Series finals, log on to bwfworldsuperseries.com for the latest information. On the elite stage, the men's singles game has produced some of badminton's biggest superstars in the history of the sport. The regeneration of the sport's exciting talents has continued to flow throughout the years. As the likes of China's Lin Dan and Li Chongwei of Malaysia head into the twilight of their decorated careers, young guns such as newly crowned European champion Victor Axelsson and Chen Long of China are worthy bearers of the torch. This week, we uncover a young talent who is eyeing to be in the company of this illustrious cast. Hi, my name is Adurat Namku. I'm 19 and I play the men's singles event for Thailand. I was the runner-up at the national championships and won bronze at the BWF World Junior Championships in Peru. I'm one for the future. We were in Thailand's capital, Bangkok, recently to catch up with the country's latest sensation. Adul Ruck enjoyed an active childhood before finding his place on the badminton courts. I started when I was four years old. As a kid, my parents encouraged me to play several kinds of sport, so I tried many of them, such as football and swimming. But I was always teased by my friends because my body was small. Then I tried badminton and I liked it. That may be the reason I have come this far. While most budding shuttlers around the world cast envious glances towards international stars like Lin Dan and Lee Chong Wei, the young Adul Rak drew his inspiration from hometown hero and 2004 Olympic men's single semi-finalist Bun Sak Punsana. My idol has always been Mr. Bun Sak Punsana. I always watched him on television and looked up to him since I was a little kid. I remember I was only seven years old when I first met him. I went to see him play at the Thailand Open. At that time, Mr. Bunsak was still a young player and had just returned from the Olympic Games. His achievement made everyone feel like he was Superman. Young Adulrak was honing his racket skills with a local club before he was spotted by national selectors in 2012. Now refining his raw talent at the Thai national team setup, Adulrak gave the world a glimpse of his potential at last year's BWF World Junior Championships. The teenager may have come up short against Cyril Verma of India at the semi final stage. But the defeat taught him valuable lessons on what he needed to improve to take his game to the next level. In the semi-final, there was a lot of pressure on me to win because I had to handle expectations that I should win the title. My fitness was a big factor because I began to tire quicker. It's physically demanding playing from the very first round. The Indian player, on the other hand, was fitter and played very well. I think I have to train harder. I was at a different pace and wasn't settled, unlike him. Adul Ruck's achievement at the youth international competition marked a milestone for his country. My goal is to do my best for Thailand ever since I became a badminton player. I was the first men's singles player in my country's history to have gone this far in this competition. I have given everything to perform well in all my matches. It was a great moment for me and my family. This is also a big competition for all youth players in the world. So to see the Thai flag raised along with that of other countries was a great honour, not just for me, but for my country as well as my family. And looking ahead, it's no surprise that the young Thai has his ambition set on sport's biggest prize. 
If you ask me, my ultimate goal would be to compete at the Olympic Games, of course. At this point of time, I am targeting a place for the next Olympics in 2020 that will be hosted by Japan. This objective will be a good start. Adil Ratnamkul is showing the badminton world that Thailand's youth program is heading in the right direction. It could only be a matter of time before he gives the land of smiles more reasons to keep on smiling. Before we go, let's see how the international circuit looks as we check out the Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, we speak to Naoko Fukuman and Kurumi Yonao as they tell us about the heartbreak of missing out on qualifying for the Olympics. See you next week.